Hello and welcome dear all to the very interesting topic on dissolution testing and setting acceptance criteria for the dissolution. In this video, we are going to understand about whether, what are the ICHQ 6 A guideline criteria for setting the acceptance criteria for dissolution testing. And see, this uh, ICHQ 6 A guideline is related to the specifications and out of that only dissolution acceptance criteria will be discussed in this video. So let's start with the video. The dissolution specifications are generally based on the type of the drug product design. Whatever the design is there for the drug product that is to be considered. The product may be immediate release, delayed release or modified release, extended release, sustained release, prolonged release and many more. So these are the general release profiles or drug product designs based on the release criteria for the oral solid formulations. So when you see the IR type of formulation, you will see the rapid release of the drug or rapid dissolution of the drug. So this is immediate release in which the drug is released within 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Then you can see the controlled release. Here the release is very slow and then comes to the zero release. So zero or zero order release. Here the concentration or drug release is independent of the concentration inside the formulation. That's why it is called as zero order release. Then coming to the delayed release here there is a lag phase and this lag phase is nothing but this is the gastro resistance time period for the formulation and after that it may release the drug in very rapid or it may release uh, the drug in little bit slower re release type. Then coming to the another point which affects the dissolution and on which the dissolution specifications are based is nothing but the solubility. The drug product may be having low solubility or high solubility. So the drug dose versus solubility of the drug in 250 ml over the pH of 1.2 to 6.8 is considered when selecting the dissolution specification. Then whether the drug is having pH dependent solubility, what is the intrinsic solubility of the drug and what is the saturation solubility. Then the BCS class is also considered. What type of BCS class is, is the drug belonging? That is class 1 highly soluble and class 3 highly soluble and class 2 and 4 these are low soluble molecules. Then there is a dissolution criteria for IR formulation which involves the rapid or very rapid type of the dissolution and here you can see very rapid dissolution the drug is released within 15 minutes that is above 80% drug is released within 15 minutes so this is the rapid uh, this is the very rapid type of dissolution for immediate release formulation the formulation may be capsule or tablet and in the second example rapid dissolution is shown here the drug is released above 80% in 30 minutes so this will become the rapid release of the formulation. Dissolution above 80% in 15 minutes at pH 1.2, pH 4.5 or 4 and 6.8. So if the dissolution is above 80% within 15 minutes, it will be said as very rapid. And if it is within 30 minutes, then it will be called as a rapid dissolution profile. Then coming to the dissolution versus disintegration. What is the DT of the formulation? And what is the dissolution? So there is a relationship between the dissolution and disintegration. So if you get the dissolution uh, profile rapid or very rapid and if you correlate with the DT then you can understand that what is the relation between the dissolution and the DT. Then relationship, relationship between the disintegration and dissolution. How has the applicant uh, developed relationship between 
the disintegration and dissolution so for any uh, tablet type of formulation first it will disintegrate into granules or aggregate and then uh, these aggregates will deaggregate and make the particles into the uh, media and then dissolution will happen so tablet or capsule disintegration is followed by deaggregation and then dissolution is happening that's why the there is a clear cut relation between dissolution and disintegration then coming to the dissolution specifications which are based on the bioavailability so relationship been determined between the dissolution and bioavailability is there a clear cut understanding so the answer may be yes or no and on the basis of that the dissolution specifications will be set then dissolution rate and effect on the bioavailability whether the slow release formulation is passing or fast release formulation is passing or what is the relationship between the dissolution rate and bioavailability so here i have shown the example like slow release medium release and fast release and its effect on the plasma concentration so here for example i have shown then coming to the dissolution specification based on the relationship between changes in composition raw material cms manufacturing process cpps and control of cms and cpps so cms are nothing but the critical material attributes which can govern the critical quality parameters of the formulation and cpps are nothing but these are the critical process parameters which can affect the cqs that are critical quality attributes so for example i have taken here the effect of particle size on the dissolution so here api particle size i have shown 20 micron 70 micron and 100 micron and the composition is formula 1 formula 2 and formula 3 so here you can see the clear cut difference between the particle size of the form api and percent drug dissolved so here with the 20 micron the release is fastest then coming to the 70 micron the release is comparatively less or slower and for 100 micron the release is still slower so if this relationship is determined between the raw material cms or manufacturing process then that dissolution method is called as a discriminatory dissolution method and discriminatory dissolution method is in simple meaning is a method which can discriminate between the good batches and the bad batches or the acceptable batches or unacceptable batches and what do i mean by the good batches and bad batches and acceptable batches and unacceptable batches so whatever the batches will pass the bioequivalence those batches are called as good batches or acceptable batches and if there is a relationship determined between the in vitro dissolution and in vivo performance of the formulation then that is called as ivivc so these all the things are interrelated between each others so this is the example of discriminatory dissolution then is there a release of formulation that is modified or extended so the relationship between different release rates and the bioavailability that is ivivc so if ivivc is available then dissolution specification can be given based on that ivivc and if it is not available then the dissolution specifications are given on the basis of general guidelines which are given by the regulatory authorities for specific type of formulation and also on the basis of the bioequivalence batch dissolution so we have to evaluate the drug release dependency on in, in vitro testing conditions is there a drug release dependency on in vitro testing conditions or not that is to be established and there should be a establishment of the possibility of ivivc so here you can see that the cmax and tmax is given this is the concentration here the plasma concentration profile can be deconvoluted and we can get the dissolution or dissolution can be 
convoluted to this plasma profile. So this is called as convolution and deconvolution. That means on the basis of in vitro dissolution data, we are expecting this release in the GI and absorption and systemic availability of the drug and vice versa. And if there is a relationship between the dissolution and disintegration and if it is rapid or very rapid, then generally the disintegration acceptance criteria with an upper time limit are given. So dissolution criteria is given for lower limit that is not less than and here the disintegration time can be given as not more than. For example, if the formulation shows 100% release within 15 minutes or within 30 minutes and if it is containing the highly soluble drug substance belonging to BCS class 1 or 3 and if its DT is around 4 minutes or 3 minutes then the generally the relationship between the disintegration and dissolution is established on based on that the dissolution or disintegration criteria can be established. But generally the DT criteria is not given for the pivotal batches. For pivotal batches dissolution is required and whenever there is a change in the product that is life cycle approach or SUPAC then dissolution is required to be done. Then coming to the decision tree second, what specific test condition and acceptance criteria are appropriate? This is for immediate release. So this decision tree discuss about the specific test conditions and the acceptance criteria. So it asks some, some questions and based on that it gives the uh, decision. So this is the decision flowchart. Does the dissolution specifically affect bioavailability? Example, have relevant developmental batches exhibited unacceptable bioavailability? That means in the development phase, is there a clear cut understanding between dissolution and bioavailability? So if it is yes, then attempt to develop a test condition and acceptance criteria which can distinguish between the batches with unacceptable bioavailability. The simple meaning of this is develop a discriminatory dissolution method which can give the clear understanding of the good batches and bad batches or acceptable batches and unacceptable batches. And if there is a no clear cut establishment of the bioavailability versus dissolution relationship, then do the changes to the formulation or manufacturing variables and does it affect dissolution? in the appropriate pH ranges media of 1.2 to 6.8. So if yes, then you have to check whether are these changes controlled by the another pro procedure or acceptance criteria. If it is yes, then adopt the appropriate test conditions and acceptance criteria without regard to the discriminatory power to pass the clinically acceptable batches. And generally this happens for the BCS class 1 and 3 molecules only. Otherwise, for VCS class 2 and 4, we have to develop a discriminatory media. And if the answer to this is no, then adopt test conditions and acceptance criteria which can distinguish these changes. Generally, single point acceptance criteria are also acceptable. So, this decision tree talks about the discriminatory ability of the method, when discriminatory method is required and when it is can be unnecessary. But nowadays, for every product, the regulatory agencies are asking for the availability of the discriminatory dissolution method. Then coming to the decision tree 3, are appropriate acceptance ranges? That means this is for the extended release. So, are bioavailability data available for batches with different drug release rates? No. If the answer is no, the applicant don't have any bioavailability data with different drug release rate formulation. Then ask the question that is drug release independent of the in vitro conditions? The answer is yes. Or here are bioavailability data available for batches with different drug, drug release rates? If the answer is yes, then can an in vivo in vitro relationship be established? Modify in in vitro conditions if appropriate. So that means the IVIVC establishment is there. If 
it is not possible then use all uh, available stability data clinical data and bioavailability data to establish the appropriate acceptance ranges that means give the specification based on the dissolution performance of the bio study batch or bioequivalence batch then are acceptable are acceptance changes more than 20% of the labeled content if it is answer yes then provide appropriate bioavailability data to validate the acceptance range and if it is no finalize the acceptance ranges now coming to the previous point of can an in vitro in vivo bioavailability relationship or ivivc is established so if yes then use the ivivc correlation along with appropriate batch data to establish the acceptance ranges that means for the modified release formulation if you are having the ivivc or if you are having a bio uh, availability data or bioequivalence data with different release rate formulations it will be easy to give the more specific uh, and relaxed specifications but if it is not there then the acceptance ranges of uh, around 10% plus minus to the mean value can be given as per the general guidelines available for extended release formulation so if the release of the bio batch is 40% at 2 hours then you can give a range of 40% plus minus 10% that means from 30 to 50% range you can give and if there is a established ivivc then the more relaxed specifications can be given like a range of 20% or 15% based on the established ivivc data so i hope you might have got the good understanding out of this video and in summary we have understood that on which basis the acceptance criteria for dissolution testing is given so mainly it is drug related it is formulation related and it is also dependent on the bio batch that is bioavailability study batch or clinical study batch so the that batch data is used to establish the dissolution acceptance criteria so thank you for watching the video please do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth and keep watching the channel for great understanding of the topics and also note that the dissolution testing related questions are very favorite questions of the interviewers and they are generally asked in the interviews thanks for watching